I'm here with Simon Townsley, a photographer who's just come back from a month in the Ukraine, um, telling me about everything that he's uh, seen there. This is his story. Uh, so you went um, uh, and, and uh, to various different places in the mm. Ukraine and encountered almost at every turn uh, the sheer determination and resilience of the Ukrainian people. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, there are, uh, you know, Putin wants to portray these people as a kind of rabble. I think he's going to be seriously disappointed, you know, or has been already because, you know, without a doubt, I have very, um, a very good um, friend, Ukrainian friend, who I've known for a very long time, and he used to tell me stories about um, Ukraine and what horrors were perpetrated on them by the Soviets, um, Stalin in particular, um, who, you know, is alleged to killed more people than Hitler did. So, you know, with that in mind, when I met Ukrainians on the ground, I was fully prepared to meet some people who had nothing to lose. You know, you know, they'd faced the Russians before in the form of the Soviets and it had been brutal and millions of them had died in, in these um, state-sponsored, state-operated uh, famines. And, you know, I don't think they had any trust whatsoever that there was any option except to fight. And so, yeah, I found, and I have found a, a, a country full of resilient and determined um, and smart um, people who have nothing to lose. President uh, Zelensky, of course, is the, um, yeah. is the face of the nation, and we see a lot of him in the, in the media in the West. Um, how is he thought of in the country? Is he, is he similarly uh, that iconic uh, leader there? Is he well perceived? Yeah, very much, yeah. Uh, he's uh, just a tremendous hero of, of the nation, and you know, um, you know, people are in love with him, they kind of lionise the guy, he's just the most, um, you know, he's just the leader that they needed, and you know, he is a great leader. Um, what will happen after the war, you know, who knows, but, it, you know, I mean, for, as a war leader, he seems to be doing the job of inspiring and leading people um, from the front. And, of course, some of the um, extraordinary stories are not um, uh, so much uh, President Zelensky and what he's doing, but with ordinary people, the mm. citizens of the country, um, who are fighting their own fights on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, some uh, stories that stand out in your mind of people that you met while you were there? Ukrainians. Yeah, I mean, they, you, you've got whole communities pulling together and they do seem to really be pulling together. You you know, there's a kind of um, sense of being a member of a community and volunteering to go and fill sandbags or, you know, volunteering to go and dig trenches um, beyond just the idea that you might volunteer to go to the front and fight. And there are plenty of people doing that. Um, youngsters, I met a few youngsters who they wouldn't take on because they We've got enough experienced people. We don't need to take twenty-year-olds yet. Thanks very much. So, there's um, everybody wants to be. In, most people want to be involved. Yeah. That I've seen at some at some level, they all support the effort that's that's going on to withstand this invasion. You know, I didn't meet anybody who was saying, "Well, you know, maybe this is a great idea for the Russians to come along." No. And maybe you wouldn't expect to meet them, but, I, uh, yeah. I, it, there didn't seem to be a sort of any any kind of crack in that. Yeah. Simon, you took um, incredible photographs. One of them that um, stands out in my mind uh, um, was a picture of um, a couple of boys, I think, yeah. um, sandbagging. Um, yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. Well, these guys, I went to Odessa, and so when we got to Odessa, um, it became instantly apparent that we weren't going to be um, invaded overnight, to me, anyway. I mean, people were very nervous, but um, from talking around, I mean, I'm not a military strategist, but, but you, you make your own 
draw your own conclusions when you're there to keep safe. So my conclusion was they've got 3,000 Marines, we think, off the coast. That is not enough people to land in an amphibious landing to control a city of a million people, you know, at least 100,000 of whom have got weapons. I mean, it's not going to work. So they're not coming ashore here. And they're not going to... Um, open up with a naval barrage and level it because it's, um, well, it slightly flies in the face of Putin's narrative, doesn't it? That he's liberating the country. You can't liberate it and flatten it simultaneously. It doesn't really work. So he has to be a little bit careful. So we were told, look, um, so I thought, well, okay, what am I going to photograph? And they said, well, come down, um, they're filling sandbags. But, um, but it, it was extraordinary to go down and see because half the, yeah, there, there were dozens of people hundreds of people down on the seafront, filling sandbags, loading them onto the back of, of trucks, and they were driving them around to, you know, all over the town. Thousands, and tens of thousands. it's cold, cold right? It's, it's really cold. It's really cold. But there were all manner of people down there. We, we met people, singers from the um, Opera House, which is a very famous Opera House down there, who were singing to keep people's spirits up. And, um, and I spotted this couple of kids um, and they'd taken their buckets and spades down as if they were just sort of How going to the beach. Well, one was eight and one was six. Really? And their mum had taken them down and said, come on in, you know. And they were filling old. sandbags. They were filling sandbags. And they were so enthusiastic. I was saying, come on, let me take a picture of you. No, no, we're filling sandbags. It was as much as I could do to get them to stop for a moment. You know, look, just let me get a picture, guys. And of course, um, Odessa uh, mm. has a rather colourful mare. Um, the mayor is a great yeah. He's and you met the mayor. I mean, we met the mayor. The mayor of Odessa is um, is an extremely colourful guy, and you know, bearing in mind we were driving, we drove a long way to see the mayor. It was a sort of eight hour drive from our previous stop, and we were concerned um, about what we might find in Odessa. At that stage, we didn't know. You know, the Russians were kind of about to sort of storm the beaches at any moment. So we'd go straight big, to the Big city, city, right? A million people. A million people. Cities. It's a big city and an historic city. It's the third largest city, I think, in Ukraine. Fantastic. A beautiful city. Beautiful buildings, opera houses. Very famous for the movie The Battleship Potemkin and the Pushkin Stairs where the... Um, it was a famous shot of a, a buggy sort of um, going down. Anyway, um, yeah, we got to the mayor's office quite late and a bit travel-worn. I'm going to take a picture of you. So he was lit by these halogen bulbs, top lit. It's really suboptimal for photography. I mean, terrible. So um, I thought I'd just work with what I had there. So I thought, hang on. Everybody else has got one. I said, have you got a weapon? Sure, he said, and he pulled out this um, Sig Sawyer. Um, I said, great, I'll take a picture of you that, but if you wouldn't mind unloading that smoke that might be a good idea for us you know everybody okay so um, anyway he was happy to do that and the photo the photo is extraordinary yeah the lighting in particular actually. yeah well the lighting I, yeah well i made that work I and mean, that was just um you know i got some gear out of the car and you fiddled around with it for a minute but you know he played the game it was all right I, I, when i looked at the photograph i thought you know that pretty much sums them up i wouldn't want to take them on yeah, yeah. and 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 perhaps a perfect um image of Ukrainian uh, resilience and what, a, what an amazing uh, people they are. Yep. Um, more of this to come.